The Associated Press reports that President Obama's latest effort to reel in big banks may have more bark than bite. Obama has proposed a tax on banks to get back billions in bailout money that was handed out at the height of the financial crisis in 2008. But analysts say that Obama's plan to limit bank size and risky trading would have only a marginal effect on institutions like J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, and Citigroup, and would be hard to enforce. And it's not clear the rules would reduce taxpayers' risks of having to bail out another big bank. Attention is centered on Obama's effort to prevent the biggest banks from doing what's called proprietary trading. That's when banks use their own money to make high-risk bets. If those bets go bad and a bank goes under, taxpayers could be on the hook. One reason is that most big banks derive only a tiny fraction of their revenue from proprietary trading. At J.P. Morgan Chase & Co. and Bank of America Corps, for instance, proprietary trading brings in 1 to 2 percent of revenue, according to a Citigroup report. Less than 5 percent of Citi's revenue comes from proprietary trading, too. The figure is 3 to 4 percent for Morgan Stanley and less than 1 percent at Wells Fargo & Co. Douglas Elliott of the Brookings Institution told the AP, quote, Proprietary investment restrictions probably won't have a huge impact on most banks. That's a pretty small part of what banks do. Citing banks' limited proprietary trading activities, Citigroup analysts Keith Horowitz and Ryan O'Connell also say that the effect of Obama's proposal, quote, may be less severe than expected. Still others say Obama's proposal doesn't go far enough. John Boyd, a finance professor at the University of Minnesota, told the AP, quote, If all we're talking about is limiting proprietary trading, it's simply not adequate. The fundamental problem is too big to fail, and until that's dealt with in a serious way, we're going to have problems.